Okay. 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 Uh, all right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, and report that we've been on a closed session at six, seven, sorry, seven, seven twenty-nine. Yes, with nothing to report. So we can all rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I, I guess at the point of order, can I ask you what litigation you were referring to? Is it something that's currently on the table? So, Stephen, you can read the agenda, please. I did read the agenda, but it didn't identify what the, the, the problem was. If it's me, that's all we can talk about. You can't identify as parties? No. no. There's no further comment. Okay, so moving on to item D on the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt? I have a motion to adopt. Second. Any discussion? None. Okay, any comments from the public? Um, is this on the consent calendar? No. no, item D, agenda. I'm sorry? Agenda. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Item E, consent calendar. Do I have a motion? A motion. Okay. Second. Any discussion from the board? Okay. I have no question. Hearing none, any uh, questions, comments from the public? Stephen? Um. So, uh, I noticed the uh, closed session had two items of interest. One was uh, some kind of litigation. I hope it's not uh, our good 90-year-old neighbors who've been here for such a long time and trying to resolve so Steve, I'm the on issue. The consent calendar, right? What? We're on the consent calendar. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was comments, a couple of comments. That's fine. Um, well, then, I, I'll let me... Uh, I, actually, I don't have any questions uh, other than there's some detail that is likely missing, but uh, I'll just leave it at that. Thanks. Okay, any other comments? Linda? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> number, bills paid number 3,300. I noticed that um, there was an item for $21,000 so far. I, in, I don't know how many more months you'll be paying for camp shirts, but $21,000 for camp shirts in one month. And last year, all I could find was $18,000 for camp shirts last summer, but that's because the um, uh, the, min the minutes and agendas don't go back more than a year, so can't find them. But I was wondering why $21,000 this year and eight, at least $18,000 last year. I remember asking last year about the big cost of camp t-shirts and I was told that, oh, we have a lot, lot less left over for this year. So do we not have a lot left over from last year for this year? And that's why we had to buy $21,000 more worth of camp shirts. Are you finished? Seems excessive. Are you finished? Excuse me? Are you finished? Are you come? This is my... Right. So it's quite, that's the type of question that you need to address to staff outside of meetings. We're not doing back and forth, and this is not an interrogation of staff during the meetings. So we can't ask a question to get an answer? That's not... Oh, all right. Okay. okay. Fine. No answers. Okay. So I could email somebody to find an answer for that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, back to the board. Uh, call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item F. Public comment open time for items not on the agenda. Stephen? Uh, yeah. So uh, there are two items discussed. Uh, and uh, during the closed session, one is conference with legal counsel concerning anticipated litigation, and the second was performance out, uh, evaluation for Eric. Um, the first question is uh, actually more of a comment that I'm very concerned with the way that uh, our neighbors, 90-year-old uh, neighbors, have been treated by the district. 
and not being able to come to some sort of settlement, but pushing them basically into the courts for something that they were willing from the outset to negotiate Since with. You, this is for um, things that are not on the agenda. I just want to write Okay, well, on. I'm commenting because I didn't have an opportunity to talk about this earlier. The second thing is, um, I would like to know what, how, I, I realize the content of the evaluation with Eric is private. However, I would like to know what per performance criteria uh, you are evaluating them by. Is it financial performance? Is it managerial performance? Is it uh, how he may have reduced costs, uh, increased revenue? You know, these are the things that the public needs to know, um, you know, what our management is doing. Um, I would say needs further work on, on a num in a number of these areas. For example, I mean, well, we can just look at the, the hole in the park where it's taken six months to decide that, yes, in fact, you need to fill it up. Um, but there are a number of other things that have cost the district a great deal of money, uh, including the $40,000 that we've spent, uh, or $30,000 $30, we've spent for pro, uh, plans that haven't been approved uh, when we were promised that uh, it was going to be $12,000 to pay for uh, the architect's plans. I'm going to tell you here and now uh, the pro, the, the so Steve, plans. Steve, you're talking about a lot of things. That the plans, I, I know, and you're interrupting me, and it does, is and my is time, so I would like to continue my time. So I'm going to continue my time. Steve, How's that? This is your first No, you're interrupting me because again. You're not Staying on topic. I my it is open time for items not on the agenda. And you're talking about and you're interrupting on the agenda. Me. Please stop, Leah. Let this is my Stephen, time. You're out of I understand. You have a policeman right there who's supposed to act as you complain. All right. Okay. But I'm talking about how you guys are spending money and actually ignoring the physical laws of nature. The, the problem with the, the Hansel project is it's not going to fit in our park the way it's designed. It's basically the whole plan will have to be uh, redrawn from the beginning. So I encourage uh, you to use criteria, objective criteria in uh, our managerial staff and please, please, okay, thank you for please thank you for your try comments. to uh, pay attention to simple courtesy. Stephen? I don't think I should have to be interrupted every time I speak here, Leah. Okay? It is not your right. Okay? I can speak. You can speak. I don't have a right to interrupt you. And you don't have an interrupt right to interrupt me. We gave you three minutes. Thank you for your comments. Other comments from the public? Yes. Linda. I want to thank everybody, well, almost everybody in this room, okay, the park manager, the district manager, every single person on this board, nobody else, for your negligence. I love you guys. You're fabulous. Do you know that you have ignored the, the people who have been complaining about the dangerous areas in our parks and on our pedestrian lanes? Do you know that there are liability laden issues everywhere in the district? And I especially have been asking and asking and asking for years, even before DeMarta left, about the pedestrian lanes, S smoothing them down, smoothing them down, smoothing them down. And six months ago, over six months ago, I asked about one particular two and a half inch sidewalk that was raised, very, very dangerous, extremely dangerous for people, two and a half inches, okay? And you've also been told about, for, for me, about the, for four and a half years, about the very slippery, dangerous incline that goes into the panhandle, full of leaves, uh, extremely dangerous in the winter, just waiting for somebody to slip and fall. Okay, well guess what? Guess who fell? Thank you so much. I tripped and fell on the sidewalk. Okay, I've been looking at that sidewalk. I walk Bongo a couple times a week up that pedestrian lane, and I look at that sidewalk, and I look at it raised, and I avoid it. I'm always looking at it, and I'm avoiding it, because I know it's going to break my hip. 
Well, guess what? There was uh, one of your landscaper guys was on Miller Creek Road, and all of a sudden I heard this loud, loud noise. It was a weed whacker. I looked up for one second to see what this noise was, and over I went on my arms, on my knees. I am in, this was three weeks ago, you guys. Thank you for your negligence, okay? I am in pain. I had to go to urgent care. I had to get x-ray. I had to go to my regular orthopedic doctor. I'm going to physical therapy. I can't, he said I can walk. He told me to keep moving, okay? But I am in pain. As long as my leg moves, I am in pain. Thank you for your negligence. You could have fixed this months and months and months ago. I have money out of my pocket. I have time uh, that I'm wasting going to all these doctors and physical therapy appointments. I'm laying around in my house because I'm not supposed to get up a lot. R rest, ice, elevation, anti-inflammatories, which are killing my stomach. I already have ulcers. And this happens to be the left knee, happens to be the knee that I had surgery on five years ago for a torn meniscus. Now, right now, my orthopedist doesn't think it's torn. We didn't do an MRI. He doesn't think it's torn. However, if it doesn't approve, improve, then thank I'm going to need surgery. Linda. Thank you so much thank for your negligence. For your and I we think you should fix item G, the district uh, incline into so the panhandle before Linda. somebody like me gets hurt because I could have broken something. Thank you. Okay, so moving on to item G1, fiscal year 2019 to 2020 proposed district operating budget. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. I'll second. Okay. We've seen this a lot of times. We've heard a lot of notes and memos. Does anybody have questions or comments? There's only been a $1,000 change in part since the last review. Um, I think we've all looked at this enough. Um, I don't see any reason to go into great analytical detail. I think it's ready. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Questions, comments from the public? Stephen? This uh, budget uh, is lacking in sufficient detail to understand um, exactly where the revenues are coming from. Uh, as well as the expenses. I noted in previous meetings, which I was shouted down at, that you were using uh, stuff like the, the uh, uh, petty cash fund to fund uh, expenses. Uh, and I assume there's no paper trail on those. But it's the way that you're using it is as a slush fund. And such accounting is ir not only irresponsible, I believe it is illegal. And if you approve such uh, uh, procedures, then you're part of what's going on here and part of the problem. So I know you're going to approve this because that's what you are going to do. but. Uh, I don't think you're properly accounting uh, for the uh, performance uh, of the district. And uh, I would wish that you'd take a second look of, uh, as a perhaps a business owner or a, a, a person managing your family budget. That's all. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the public? I do. Um, just a couple little quick ones. First of all, you know, I've been talking about the um, fire department <coughs> safety utility vehicle that goes up into the hills to rescue people up in the hills open space. And I know that it was on the budget last year, but it was taken off. And I know it was on the budget the year before, and it was ignored. And I was looking at this January um, Department Capital Expenditures and Reserve Needs from January board meeting. And it says vehicle, utility, truck, and outfitting, $45,000 in fiscal 19 slash 20. And it's not in the budget. 
So that's one of my comments. But I also want to say thank you to the chief for letting us have a rental. I mean, a, a, a you know, one of those your, your utility vehicles to use because that will save people's lives, in my personal opinion. But it was on the anticipated um, budgetary expenditures, and it never showed up. That's the first one. The second thing is, and I'm going to have to be really dumb on this, I know that the district manager has mentioned this before, and I hope you can give me an answer, not just leave me in limbo. Um, I know that we have extra money coming in because the property taxes were more than we thought they were going to be, and I know that the district manager said something about putting an extra 10000 in each of the different departments, but then I can't remember what he said about the extra amount of money that was left over. I recall he was going to put it into a bucket somewhere, but where's the bucket? Thank you for your comments. Ah, you're not going to answer me. So, uh, okay. I can, uh, on the budget, I can respond to that. Okay. You know, it, doesn't, it doesn't go into a bucket. Uh, all the property taxes accounted for within the operating budget. The, uh, any excess is held in the park department, uh, but it's captured under the district total. This is the leftover? I, I wouldn't call it the leftover, but it is uh, any any excess beyond budgeted expenditures. Yes, and, and can you tell me what page that is? Uh, it's on the park revenue page, but if you look in the district page, it is all right there. It doesn't show as extra or a bucket or anything like but that. But it is in the park department. Correct. Okay, thank you very much for answering. I appreciate that. Okay, coming back to the board, um, let's call the question. Um, all those in favor of approving the fiscal year district operating budget? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries unanimously. Item number G2, fiscal year 2019-2020, publicly available pay schedule of all positions. Do I have a motion for this one? So moved. I'll second that. Alright. Uh, Eric, did you want to get a little heat in for this? Yeah, I can. Um, this is a ministerial action. The board is required to annually, uh, with each fiscal year, approve the, what's known as a publicly available pay schedules. These uh, actually wind up being posted to the website, and they set the pay schedules for the next year. Uh, not that they can't be amended throughout the years, has happened in times past. Uh, with this one, the only thing to really note, and I made it very clear on the lead-in memo that I did here, is as was discussed with the last few budget reviews, uh, it includes a 3% base wage increase for our park maintenance staff. Uh, I left two very clear charts that show what that difference would be, and then that is in this actual pay schedule. So this is your formal action approving that increase. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any discussion, questions, comments from the board? No. Questions, comments from the public? Um, that extra 3%, that's a cost of living raise, so that's not a merit raise. So does that mean that the park maintenance employees are at the top, 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 top of the their steps, and they can't get any regular raises, and all they can get is cost of living? And if so, I think 3% is way too much, because our parks are a mess. The um, park maintenance shed area, it's always got piles and piles of debris everywhere. There's weeds. Just walking up here in the front of the building, weeds, 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 weeds. How hard is it to pull weeds? I love pulling weeds. I can't now, but it's not hard to pull weeds. And then you've got four foot tall foxtails all along the sidewalk that goes all along the park. And all these weeds that never get pulled or cut or whacked or anything or, and picked up. And the, the less you pick up, the less you pull out, the more weeds you're going to have. They multiply. They, well, even in the uh, panhandle in that beautiful area where they whack down or they mow down all the, the five-foot-tall uh, foxtails, they left them there. Piles and piles and piles of foxtails. 
Now, don't you, doesn't anybody in the park department understand? You leave these foxtails down, they're going to reseed, 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 reseed. You're going to have millions and trillions and gazillions of foxtails. So for those reasons, especially the weeds, I don't think this area looks really nice at all. Maybe uh, up in other places it does, but weeds, weeds, weeds everywhere. Panhandle is disgusting with foxtails. Piles of debris all along Miller Creek Road from the sidewalk to the street. It's a disaster. So I don't think they deserve 3%. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Stephen? Yeah, I, as far as it, I, I would also like to comment on this. First of all, uh, I'd like to point out that uh, Eric reported last month that there was a 2.5% increase in property taxes anticipated, and so we're giving 3%. So that actually leaves us in the hole. Now, as far as what the, the pay level is, I'm going to just say that if it's in line with what the county is paying, I'm fine with it. However, um, I would like to point out that we have more staff per acre of land than the county does. If you look at, at uh, uh, McGinnis Park, I think they have six full-time people, and they've got... 26 times the space, a lot more area uh, covering. Um, and I also agree with Linda, we, we could do better, uh, uh, we could do better with our maintenance. The trails look really rough. There's lots of uh, sedimentation and erosion that has never been addressed. We uh, brought this up to you almost every month and it never seems to get uh, through. Um, Quite frankly, I think this is a problem with the board and the management for not following up on it, not providing good, clear direction. So, I would like you to give these guys uh, a raise, but I would like you also to set uh, uh, performance criteria, for all, not only for them, but for all our staff, and abide by it. And, look towards how, not longevity, but how they uh, perform to uh, performance criteria, like rest of us in the real world. Thank you. All right, I'll bring it back to the board. We'll call the question. All those in favor? Well, wait, wait, it, are we talking about the rest of the, the positions as well? No. So, we're done with the comment. We are calling so, the question. So, hang on for a second. No, we were just not. talking about a portion of this. So you're saying you you were talking about everything? Is that what you were, we're saying? We're on item G2, which is fiscal year 2019. Uh, okay, so 2020. you don't want to talk about the performance levels we or the salary levels of that. other That's employees. I'm just asking you. You you only talked about the maintenance area. Can you just answer yes or no? Whether whether or not you talked about everybody? We're out of you're out of line. This is the board. I'm calling the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Mm -hmm. Moving on to item G3, district manager's report. Eric, I'll turn it over to you. Good, thank you. Uh, one key thing I wanted to bring up, and again, a uh, pretty detailed report is regarding the sinkhole in the panhandle. Um, as we strongly suspected and have completely confirmed, it's 100% caused by a rotted out failing storm drain that is underneath I believe it's about 30 inch to 36 inch drain. Uh, I reached out to DPW to make sure that they were aware because this drain is basically entirely fed through uh, catchment uh, systems along the street gutters. The county's position is that once it leaves the county right away, they no longer maintain any level of responsibility for it, so they put that back on us. They're citing uh, uh, various case law, however, there's also a pretty strong case currently in the Supreme Court working its way through uh, that might flip that position on its head. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it's something that's going to need to get prepared. We're we'll continuing to kind of investigate it and work into uh, uh, this. The one thing I can say is based on kind of some of our initial conversations, this is going to jump up into a public works project and it's going to meet certain financial thresholds on how much it's going to cost to repair. Um, and simply plugging it isn't an option because we would then be liable for any water diversion damage that we caused by doing so. Uh, 
one way or the other it needs to get fixed at this point obviously there's not a heck of a lot of water running through there but we're expecting some rain coming back up uh, and again um, this is confirmed I mean, the bottom of this pipe is just completely deteriorated out uh, this is a large problem all throughout the county because a lot of marine was developed at the same time and a lot of it used cmd piping uh, so these are things that they're dealing with. Uh, Linda touched on it earlier. The other thing I wanted to bring up is I did want to thank uh, Chief Gray and Santa Fe Fire Department because they have placed one of their utility trucks at Station 58. It is available for use to our firefighters. This is a very nice uh, gesture on their part. It certainly helps our guys out if and when needed. Um, it's nice to have it stationed there, so thank you again. Uh, Otherwise, if there's any other kind of questions that are on this, other than uh, I did submit a letter to Marin Municipal on behalf of the district and all of our water accounts formally opposing and protesting their uh, rate increases and methodology. Whether that does any good, I doubt it, but the letter was sent. All right. Uh, questions, comments from the board? Yeah, I got a couple of questions. Okay. Um, with regard to the sinkhole and the, uh, I think a camera was put up. To, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did it go up to the damaged area or beyond the damaged area? All the way through. All the way through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell Measured me? Measured exactly how many feet of damaged area there was, where it transitions from cement to CMP, um, the whole nine yards. Okay. And the county right of way is where exactly? Underneath the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's basically what? Quiet Wood? Quiet Wood, Pine Wood, Miller Creek Road, all of those. Um, there are several uh, catchment basement basins uh -huh. that feed into this uh, that then roll through. We actually got the, the mapping of it all, so it's pretty obvious to see which ones come in and drop in and go through. It travels underneath various private residences mm -hmm. um, and then eventually uh, leaves that, goes through the Panhandle area and discharges into the creek. So is there... Um, they dropped a camera from the nearest quiet wood catchment basement okay. basin, uh, and ran it all the way from there to the end. Okay, so there's nothing that the homeowners on quiet wood or pine wood should be particularly concerned about. They actually have cement under their homes. Okay, all right, very good. That's mm -hmm. all I wanted to know. I've actually been communicating with the one homeowner who it does run under because he was a really nice gentleman who actually mm -hmm. has a lot of park knowledge because he used to work for San Francisco Parks. and. Uh, when we saw the video and everything else, I let him know that, uh, well, I got good news and bad news for you. The good news is you've got cement underneath your house. The bad news is if anything ever happens to it, you're on your own. <laughs> yeah, that's the current approach. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else from the board? Comments from the public? Yeah. Stephen? So, to me, there's some pretty obvious stuff going on here with that sinkhole. First of all, if it's broken in one place, it's likely broken in many places. Um, I, you know, you can do a lot of inspections, a lot of studies, but the bottom line is you're going to fill up that hole. Um, you have an opportunity to observe during a rainstorm whether or not any water is running through that area, whether it's going to cause a problem. But um, from what I've been able to gather, you know, basically the way you deal with these sinkholes is you fill them up and monitor them and, you know, hopefully you'll fix them. But uh, as far as the damage being done, maybe you could block off the, the you know, the, the, the concrete pipe going out, out to the, uh, um, out through the park and just drain someplace else if, it, if you think it's going to cause a, a backup issue. But, my guess is, looking at the condition of that hole, which has been relatively dry since February, that the, we really don't have a problem with uh, water running through that area, and that whatever damage was created was a long time ago. Um, please, somebody with, you know, practical common sense, decide to do the right thing, and, and don't take any more time with this, because it is a safety issue. We're, 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 we're impacting the park and the safety of our residents. Thank you. Linda? Yeah, um, going along with what Stephen said, that area right where the sinkholes are is the same big, gigantic, humongous puddle right. that I kept talking to Luke about 
okay, six or eight months ago, and it would disappear, and I would thank him for filling it in, and he said, oh, no, we didn't fill it in. Yeah. And then a day later, it would appear. Yeah. So that particular puddle um, right next to the sinkhole has got something to do with it. But I'm also wondering if, remember, I've been talking about the mucky, mucky, uh, swampy area that's right around the telephone pole that is not being used, right next to the uh, trailer, the park trailer. There's this big, gigantic, swampy area, and then there's an unknown drain. I mean, it's the drain is known, but nobody knows why it was ever put in that goes out into the creek bed. And so that could be another area that there might be some water uh, culvert drain pipe problems, and maybe it should be looked into. I hope it's going to be looked into before the park maintenance shed rebuild happens. But I did bring it up, and I think that's kind of a weird place to have a swampy area and a drain pipe into the creek bed that nobody knows why it's there. So, uh, again, I think you're right. There's probably more. And I, actually, I, I, I agree. I think that's that's why we've had that puddle area, and that they had managed that from before I was there. They had a little uh, uh, a thing over the uh, uh, little bridge. I have a feeling that that has backed up for thirty odd uh, thirty odd years or more. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you for your comments. Well, uh, well, you know, you have to figure these things out with common sense first. Yes. Thank you. And don't even know. Okay. So moving on to item H1, Fire Department Matters. We have the Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. Chief Brian, would you have to take it over? Good evening. It's uh, my pleasure to publicly announce the, the promotion uh, this week of John Papa Nicolau, a 17-year uh, Marinwood veteran. Anyway, he'll uh, be pinned at a ceremony at New Fire Station 52 in San Rafael that we dedicated last night. So you're all invited uh, to attend. It's uh, 8.30 in the morning. We're going to have uh, two other uh, promotions uh, to fire captain involving uh, San Rafael uh, personnel. And then we're going to have a number of other badge pinnings and, and uh, honors uh, bestowed upon various personnel. So it should be, a, should be a great morning. And if you haven't visited or seen uh, the inside of uh, Station 52, it's a facility that we all share. It's a regional uh, training facility. So in addition to the station, um, there is a classroom and a, a training tower that's utilized. So uh, anyway, I think you'll, you'll find it very nice and hope you can join us. Um, brief update on firefighter recruitment. And I can just tell you that uh, a national basis, there has been a, a downturn in the availability of candidates uh, for both volunteer and paid professional positions. Um, departments across the country are experiencing uh, both attrition, uh, so uh, vacancies, and a shortage of uh, candidates. I think some of it may be just be a change in direction with young people and maybe not pursuing it, or maybe we just need to do a better job of marketing. So we're pursuing all avenues to make sure we have the finest people available um, that we both recruit and retain. So we're in the process of an extended recruitment that began at the first of the year. We're still undergoing um, that recruitment. And uh, just today, we interviewed uh, six uh, firefighter paramedics. Marinwood personnel were involved in uh, assessment of uh, some personnel uh, yesterday uh, at, the, at the training center. And they recommended some move forward in the process. So I'll be... Um, on the phone tonight, uh, moving some along into a preliminary background uh, portion of the process, and uh, I think uh, we're going to have some success. So hopefully, I'll be able to announce uh, in the next uh, next month um, a, a, a new firefighter from Marinwood. So anyway, we're working on that, and uh, obviously, it's extremely important to us to find uh, high quality individuals to complement our existing crews, and uh, so that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you. Any Chief, questions? Can I ask a quick question just for clarification? Station 52 is where they conduct a lot of the uh, Joint Fighter Academies, correct? Yes. yes. Which is something that our firefighters, when they come on, take part in. It has to do with ours, Larkspur, uh, 
Santa Fe firefighter, so it's a joint training situation for new, newly hired firefighters basically going through the internal academy or the internal apparatus systems, blah, blah, blah. You can explain what it is better, but that station is key to those training efforts. Excellent. Is that the one at Whole Foods? Or? Yes. It actually used to be at uh, 210 Third Street when it was initially opened in 1957. It faced Third Street. That was changed over the years. And then, as you probably know, we uh, demolished it two and a half years ago and have spent the last two years building the new facility. So, and we changed the address to 52 Union because we moved the station uh, north. So, anyway, it's, uh, it's terrific and I hope you can attend. Thank you. Okay. Any questions, comments from the board? Just happy to see you feeling better. Thank you. Was there no fire commission meeting? There was no fire commission meeting. Okay, all right. Um, has there been any movement on the Firewise Committee? There has been some movement on the on Firewise Committee and some progress. Yes? Okay, very good. Look forward to hearing about that. Okay. Questions from the public? Yeah, I, um, Chief, I, 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 I was trying to follow what you were saying, and, and I'm glad you recognize the talent of our great firefighters. Um, are you, are they now kind of part of one team? Is that the way you're looking at it? I mean, is there going to be uh, 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 opportunities for our staff to advance through the San Rafael ranks and vice versa? Well, uh, right now, we're doing it in parallel. So okay. they're actually separate departments, but we're functioning as one. So we've actually um, integrated um, things to the point now where we have uh, Marinewood personnel uh, participating in uh, entry-level recruitment, um, entry-level fire academy, and promotional examinations. So we're really conducting them as one uh, organization, but we're still uh, two separate uh, departments. Okay, so other than their checks, are they, are they on the same pay and benefits? Uh and we're still operating independently from that, but we're overall operations day to day. It's it's seamless. Um, they do. We have a shared services agreement. So uh, Marinewood firefighters and San Rafael firefighters have the opportunity to exchange work locations. So when there's vacancies, um, but we're not operating under one memorandum of understanding yet. So it so seems could be at a point in the future. Uh, a, dis a discussion item as we move along here. But I'm really pleased about the progress we've made. Thank you. So and thank Stephen, you. I just want to keep you really focused. This is just on the activity, the officer summary, report and activity summary. Okay, this is not open ended question time. This is your comments. So, do you have I, any further uh, comments? Uh, as, as I have done, I commented on what was reported. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I actually have a, an additional. Uh, comment. You were quoted in the paper as talking about the wildfire program. So, Stephen, and we're just talking about this this report, okay? The wildfire program. Isn't isn't he the fire uh, chief? Okay. Yeah. So you don't want to talk about the wildfire risk in this this uh, uh, valley. Okay. Maybe no one needs to know. Maybe it's just you. further comments? All right, so the date of the next fire commission meeting is June 4th. And um, moving on to item I-1, Park and Recreation Matters. We have the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. Thank you. Well, the Recreation staff has been busy um, getting things finalized for the summer programs. Uh, Continuing to finalize uh, staffing for the pool, summer camps, etc. Um, purchasing supplies, training uh, staff as they get uh, hired and come in. And um, finalizing special events and, and things like that. So it's been very busy in the uh, back office. Also, um, phones and emails and customers nonstop. And I've been very proud of how Rob and Stephanie and Carolyn have been um, able to juggle all their responsibilities with the constant barrage of, uh, of customers and questions and, and registrations and um, things seem to be chugging along and everyone's been uh, doing a great job. Our new recreation supervisor, Stephanie, um, I'll hopefully be able to introduce to you at the next meeting, um, has been uh, picking things up very quickly and, and uh, feels like she's worked here a lot longer than she has, so we're very pleased with um, how she's been integrating herself into, the, into our team. 
we've had a couple special events uh, since we since we last met. Uh, one wine and canvas night. Um, it was a fun time uh, where participants were able to um, paint their own masterpiece with guidance from an instructor, um, which, was, which was pretty fun. And we had our 40th annual Los Angeles Lions uh, egg hunt, which uh, saw another huge crowd. And then just a few days ago, we had a happy hour event um, with uh, beer tasting by State Room Brewery and some live music by Tom Rhodes, uh, which, was, which was which was a fun time. The next thing coming up would be our summer music series, and I should be able to, uh, the, the lineup for that, I think the last date is being finalized, and we should have it up on the website, and we'll have it up in some posters and things, um, hopefully uh, by next week, so we'll be announcing that very soon, and we're looking forward to another good concert series. Um, moving on to um, parks and maintenance, uh, the... Parks maintenance staff has been uh, prepping the uh, parks for the summer foot traffic, doing a lot of turf maintenance, um, some irrigation repair, uh, getting some of the picnic areas cleaned up, and um, trying to get everything fortified for the onslaught of, of uh, hundreds and hundreds of kids and, uh, and families coming through. Um, keeping up with the weeds uh, is, is always challenging, and we're hitting areas as we can, um, and continue with our uh, regular weekly maintenance. Does anyone have any questions? No questions. So there's only four? Um, in, in terms of the music series, uh, we the last few years we have done four Friday night concerts, and then the fifth one is actually our um, right. Summer Brew Fest, which is on a Saturday. In the okay, so that's why right, you didn't list it there? Correct, yeah. So, um, okay, because I was looking yeah. at any thought. Okay. Yeah, so there's still five, but just one of them's bigger than, than right. yeah. Other questions, comments, or okay, any other com comments from the public? Linda? I would like to know when the westernmost entrance from Quietwood into the Panhandle to have incline is going to be fixed for its inadequate safety. It needs to be fixed. I've been asking for it for four and a half years, almost five years. It's extremely dangerous. I try to avoid it as much as possible. Unfortunately, sometimes the 17-year-old dog that I'm walking can't walk very far, and if we want to go into the panhandle, that is the very quickest way into the panhandle. So I have to be extremely careful, and I know other people are, especially with um, baby strollers. So I would hope that someone would finally get to this area that is a huge liability for Marinwood. Thank you for your comment. Stephen? Yeah, uh, was Tom Rhodes paid? Uh, he was, yes. He was. I didn't see the check. Would you, you pay the cash? Uh, probably uh, is going to be the next round of all right I mean, just, this, was, this was last Friday right okay so I, I know that we have a lot of uh, alcohol related events and this is a family community I'm really actually concerned I guess we do get our booze for free and so it's highly profitable for the district but um, I ask that we curtail this activity uh, I don't think it's family friendly uh, in Marin particularly, we do have a problem with alcoholism, and I just think, uh, you know, happy hour, which was happy three hours, I think, uh, it's, it's a little much, and I don't think we need it. Uh, we would be better off taking uh, the rental for the evening or doing a family-friendly uh, activity. Um, the next thing, too, is... Uh, there seems to be, apps, Measure A is uh, uh, going to be reapproved, Measure A being the parks fund, or the, they're going to ask for reapproval of that. And that was meant to improve accessibility, uh, park maintenance, and, and things to make our parks better. And as we're spending thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 with ex-director uh, uh, Bill Hansel, I mean, can we just take time and really pay attention to our seniors? Uh, about a year ago, I, I made the request as uh, 
uh, on behalf of my neighbors that you consider painting yellow lines, couldn't cost you more than 50 bucks to do it, uh, on the tennis court so they could play uh, 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 pickleball that was supposed to be studied and it never came to fruition. Linda has actually offered at one point money to make the repair that she comes back before you begging like a peasant before you to, to, for you guys to fix and you, you don't do anything and I think it's shameful. It's shameful the way that you treat our seniors. It's shameful the way that our 90 year old neighbors who've been um, lived here since the 60s have been treated by the district in resolving a landslide onto their property. We need to refocus our priorities. What are we as a community? And uh, we are, in large part, the parks, and we need to pay closer attention to the parks and less attention to, you know, drinking, drinking activities. Thank you for your comment. Uh, item I-2, date of the next Park and Recreation Commission meeting, May 28th. And on to item J1, new and other business. Request for a future meeting agenda items. Is there anyone on the board have anything? Okay, any comments from the public? Stephen? Yes, I, uh, I'm going to ask this again. I think it's very reasonable. You take a lot of tax money from us. I'd like to know what your priorities are, the standards that you want in the district as far as maintenance, and I want to see you guys you know, come together, come to some sort of agreement on it with great specificity, and enact a, uh, uh, a program that rewards the employees that meet the objectives of the district. Um, it, it, it just simply needs to be done. It's a good management practice. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Uh, moving on to item K, recognitions and board member items of interest. I brought one thing I'll share. One is it that I don't want to share. I picked this up. Um, over the weekend, but this, there's a day-long workshop at Spirit Rock called Mindful Leadership, Seven Practices of a Mindful Leader. And it's on Friday, May 31st from 10 to 4.30. I think I'm going to try to go if anybody else is interested. Um, the teacher is Mark Lesser, who I have not heard of, but in general I find they have a lot of quality teachers and programming out there, so just wanted to share that. Anything else from the board? Okay, uh, anything from the public for under recognitions? Comments? Yeah. All right. um, I'll just I say one thing. Um, school's great this year. Good work. Actually, good work to everybody. I, I hate to complain all the time, but you know, those are the things that are on my mind. But there are a lot of good things that you guys do too, and you do, they should be acknowledged. So I'm, without telling you what they are, I'm going to acknowledge them. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody.